big hello and a very warm welcome to Brand Equities, the Wali special with me, Sonali Krishna. We're calling it the CEO Makeover. Now, every Diwali, Brand Equity attempts to whip up something truly unique for its viewers. And this time, we've attempted the same. We've got India's youngest CEO and his wife joining us shortly, along with India's ace designer. As you can see, I'm in one of the country's leading designer showrooms. It's none other than that of JJ Valaya's. Now, JJ Valaya is a man who needs no introduction at all. But for the uninitiated, here's a quick profile of what the man has achieved in the world of fashion. A renowned fashion designer with over 20 years of experience in the business, a founding member of the Fashion Design Council of India, a fine arts photographer and the first global brand ambassador of Crystal Giant Swarovski. JJ Valaya is quite clearly the king of couture. But as many success stories go, that's not how Valaya's journey started out. He was born Jaksharanjit Singh Aluvalia on October 8, 1967 in Rajasthan but spent most of his childhood travelling to different parts of the country due to his father's various postings in the Indian Army. He studied commerce and eventually went on to become a chartered accountant. At a time when there was no Indian fashion designers in the country, JJ, a young disillusioned CA, joined the National Institute of Fashion Technology and graduated in 1991. In 1992, along with his older brother TJ Singh, JJ Valaya founded the House of Valaya with the launch of his couture label. And the rest is history. With his countless awards, endless fashion shows and several labels, he has dressed some of the biggest names in the world from various GCC royals to celebrities including Joseph Fiennes, Kate Blanchett, Rithik Roshan and Kareena Kapoor. The man is here himself, JJ Valaya. Thank you so much for joining us on Brand Equity. Truly a pleasure. My pleasure actually. It's an interesting uh, the thing to be on a business show. Uh, JJ, you know, everybody knows who you are and what you've achieved in the fashion world. But, you know, let's go back in time and tell me when you were a struggling designer, what does it take for designers today to make a mark globally? When we started, the industry did not exist. Right. So the beauty of it was that we were actually learning from our own mistakes, which is something magical about it. Right. There were no benchmarks to follow. Certainly no TV channels, there was only Doordarshan. Right. There was no internet, there were no glossies, there was nobody writing about fashion because it didn't exist. Sure. So you're talking about a world which was absolutely barren. Right. And then we sort of thought, okay, it'll be nice to put our names on clothes and hope that people buy them. Well, it paid off, it kind of worked. Today, a designer's advantages are huge because you can actually have multiple platforms to launch you, you have innumerable kind of publications and TV channels covering what you're doing. Right. You have the internet, which has shrunk the world into one little, you know, sort of tap of the key. Then and now, it's a different world. I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the Diwali season and how it works for you as, you know, one of the ace designers of India. Uh, is there a lot, is a bevy of activity surrounding you during this festive period? The Indian fashion season pretty much starts around August, September right. and goes till about March. This is peak season. Right. Now, this is when Diwali, of course, is big, but this is also when all the weddings happen. Sure. Because this is that time where... It's suspicious. It's suspicious, the taras and the chants and some, some you, know, you know how it is yeah. with Indians. Um, but Indians love to dress up. I mean, that's a fact and there's nothing wrong in that. Absolutely. I mean, at least we are living a life less ordinary, which is what I always call it. Right. Otherwise, they're living in our jeans and t-shirts and everything all our lives. So yes, it is. It is indeed a very hectic time. But having said that, more and more Indians are dressing well through the year. Okay. So it's not like a phenomena that Diwali, so we are going to go all the way. Okay. Otherwise, let it be. But Diwali, of course, is a very important. So, uh, JJ, I'm going to tell you a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, the couple that's going to be joining us shortly. He is the CEO of Air Asia. His name is Mithu Chandelia. He's India's youngest CEO. He's all of 33. Extremely good looking, a former ramp model. And he's uh, married an Estonian girl. Her name is Inga. And they're really excited to come and meet you and get all dressed up, dolled up, and so that you can style them for Diwali. And you know, they're big fans of yours. And I'm really excited about meeting them. But for all of you who want to know how Mithu Chandalya made it as CEO of AirAsia at 32, here's a quick profile of how his journey began till date. A former model, husband and father of three, an MBA graduate, entrepreneur and now CEO of Air Asia India. 
quite a handful of roles and Mithu Chandalya has achieved all of that at a young age of 33. The younger CEO of India Inc, Chennai born Mithu made news and how when Air Asia Global CEO Tony Fernandez named him the pilot of the India operations. While aviation may be virgin territory, Chandelia boasts of a remarkable CV, having sold his startup SOS in 2001 for a whopping £1.2 million. At 24, he was the youngest GM at Ingersoll Rand and was involved in a decision to shut down the company's Colorado plant and move it to Mexico. Although Chandelia studied in Rishi Valley School in Andhra Pradesh, he has never worked in the country. What's interesting is that the current AirAsia CEO loved writing poems during his school days. But unfortunately, we can't tag him as India's most eligible bachelor. Thank you so much, Mithu. Truly a pleasure to have nice you on Brand Equity. Thank you so much for joining us, Inga. Very nice to meet you. This is JJ Valaya, the designer. Hi, Hi JJ. How you. are you? Good to see Hello. you. Hello. And as I was telling you before, that uh, Mithu Chandalia, the CEO of AirAsia, the youngest CEO, is also telling him probably the most good looking as well. Ah, thank you. That's <laughs> <laughs> so you can blush. <laughs> that's, Part right, of the deal. that's right. <laughs> So, uh, how is it going for you? Uh, you know, moving base from Singapore to China. Well, it's uh, it's been it's been great, but you know, I'm really blessed to have a very supporting spouse who's taken care of all of the hard stuff. All I got to worry about is the planes and my employees. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not going to have a problem with them because they're actually great looking people. So mm, that kind of makes my job easier. So we've read so much about you just recently, a couple of days ago in a newspaper and we were like very excited to meet you in person and come to Delhi and see your showroom and try out some exquisite pieces. So and I'm glad you're here and I think we're going to have a lot of fun now. I can't wait. <laughs> So while Mithu, Inga and JJ are getting acquainted, we're heading into a short break. But coming up, we're going to see a bevy of activity with Inga and Mithu trying out clothes and JJ, of course, critiquing it. Back, you're watching the Brand Equity Diwali special with me, Sonali Krishna. We're calling it the CEO Makeover. As you can see behind me, there's Mithu Chandalia, the CEO of AirAsia, along with his wife Inga, India's ace designer JJ Valaya, and they're busy picking out outfits and you know they're getting really excited about dressing up for Diwali. So let's go join them. Even there is some other blues I can already see. This is see. one thing you should definitely yes. try. Okay. Because yes. it'll, it'll, you'll see what I mean when you actually try it. I love the orange and red. It's very Indian, but also it's very warm and beautiful color combination. But you usually don't like the bling bling. I'm usually very... Welcome um, to India. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Saris I would stay away from for you. Because otherwise you're going to spend the rest of the evening trying to figure out what to do with the drink. And, and you want to be comfortable in the party, Yeah, right? so comfort comes first, <laughs> in your case, specifically, as it would be if he went, say, to a Sweden or something and had to wear a tra traditional outfit there. You must see the sarees though, because to me, this is the Indian answer to gowns. And why I say that is because I've had instances where certain friends of mine have worn a sari with say a jacket, they've actually, somebody's worn it with a, we have this very iconic jacket called the Adika jacket. And they wear a sari with that. We walked into some of the biggest parties in Paris and every head has turned in that room to see what that person was wearing. So that's the power of a sari, but it requires some handling. And I don't think for Diwali that would be an appropriate option for you. So I'm not really going to go this way. Though. This is beautiful. Well, that's like a stitched up one, so we could try that, try that. Stitched because, up sorry. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. You would, uh, you, you, and it's a great color. It's a beautiful color. Yeah. I love it. So we should try that one also, because it gives you the elegance of the sari. So we have the blue there, right? Yes. yes. The one next to it, the two of you were debating which one. Yes. Mm. And then we have the red sari. Red sari. And, and the pink dress. And we can try the, yeah. So we have like four hands. 
I know. I, I'm so happy to see the excitement on your face. <laughs> which one do you want to wear first? Which one did you wear first? Uh, let's start with the blue. Let's go exactly in that order. Okay. Mm. okay. Let's start with the blue. But I like, I like, I like JJ's advice. Uh, take something that you would never wear. Because it might surprise you. Yeah, go for something. So, you know, while she's trying out her first outfit, let's go check out, uh, you know, Mithu's uh, Diwali outfit. Yeah, sure. So I, I usually like something very simple and something that's comfortable. So my favorite piece till now is actually that one, okay. the black and white one there. Lovely. And uh, it just fits, um, I think, with the fitted bands and with the jacket that's... Yeah. And yeah. here with the Nehru jacket, I actually, again, sticking with the simplicity theme, I like the blue a lot. Mm -hmm. Depends what you wear in it, you right. know, and what, what pants that go with it. But when it comes to Diwali, mm -hmm. most men would go here, Very nice. which is the kurtas. So we're going to try this on you. Mm -hmm. A lot of heavy stuff here, yep. which you should just sort of ignore. <laughs> oh, but you one. can go <laughs> in for simpler styles. So when you go for something like that, this with this nice. nice pocket square, with a flash of color, and something like that should work quite beautifully. I could actually wear this for launch parties. And yeah, lot of that. you this could, be nice. absolutely. And you so, got the Eurasia red there, very yeah, nice. Yeah, so <laughs> really sort nice. of... Oh yeah, of course. And then the other thing we could look at right. was something like that, uh -huh. which also looks fantastic. Nice. So we've got three or four options and I think we can actually begin trying them out. JJ, okay. what about that very unique blue? This one? Yeah. Yeah, well... It's not bad actually. Hmm? And that's a good option. It's something that... What material is this? It's a jacquard, it's a special weave. Very nice. And it's a combination of silk and this thing. So this is something, yeah, it's, it's something which is, it's a very different color for men. So on her recommendation, we're going to take this. All right. So tell me, why hmm? did you decide to change this lovely, glamorous career of being a model and you know, possibly a future actor? Honestly, I, I come from a very middle class family and everyone in my family is either engineers or doctors. And so there's always this study well, you know, do well. I used to be a junior professional tennis player too. Wow. So I had that option and I was pursuing that quite aggressively. I had a very bad knee injury and I couldn't play anymore. Okay. But um, I don't know, I always felt that, look, age oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. will take away your looks. And so I wanted to build something, you know, which was a legacy. That so at which age did you make this whole switch? This, uh, was, this was very young. I was 20, 21. I finished B school, I started my own company and then ended up selling it to a big MNC. And then I joined another American company doing mergers and acquisitions for them. Wow. I started running North America and they sent me to China. I ran Asia Pacific for them. Okay. Then to Malaysia and then Singapore. And you know, I was always the youngest. You know, I was the youngest general manager. I was 23 when I became a general manager in the US. And uh, then they sent me to China. I was again one of the youngest VPs. And uh, I was, you know, I always took pride in that. When you were named the mm -hmm. CEO of AirAsia, a lot of critics said that, you know, he's far too young, far too mm -hmm. inexperienced, very mm -hmm. new uh, in the aviation sector, yeah. and it's a really complicated sector yeah. and a bleeding sector. So, uh, what do you have to say? I mean, uh, do you think I age matters? Do you think experience, all. domain expertise really is required? I think domain expertise does matter. Uh, but, you know, all those reactions, I loved it. Because, you know, I love being an underdog. And I love being somebody that's going to come and really surprise people. Sure. So that shock and awe and, you know, the wow effect, I love those. I think domain expertise does matter, but it depends on the role that you're going into. So I have a track record of building up some of the most aggressive teams. And, you know, I think that's where my age is a benefit. Do you think being good looking is half yes. the battle won? Uh, no. I actually think sometimes it's a, it's, a, it's a negative. It's a negative. Yeah, because, you know, you got to... You know, when the initial reports came out, they said something like from the runway to the boardroom. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, you know, you got to work doubly hard to, you know, build credibility in a space like aviation, which is in India still going through its process of, you know, opening up. Sure. So I think it, it works hard, but, you know, in certain aspects, it does help.
This really is what I meant by the journey from the rack onto a person. Is such an important journey because once you wear it, you really get to know what, what it's all it's about. Stunning. Ah, so okay, this was your recommendation. Wow. And actually, it's fantastic. It's like an Indian denim. But I would like to see the others. Of course, definitely. of course. Of course. Wow. wow! Okay, that's a unanimous wow. It's a classic. It's a classic, but it's classy. No doubt. So that to me is also very important because it's, you know, it's traditional, it's got a self weave, it's got a little dash of color, which is very interesting for I have to admit, this is one of my favorites. It's actually a stitched up sari. But I'm, I'm, I'm more for the Second? earlier one. Yeah. The middle one? For sure. For sure. Wow. Okay. So now I'm confused. <laughs> I like the fact that you can actually wear a shirt underneath and actually leave that open and just one little a bit of a tie. As you can see, JJ has been very busy critiquing the two models, Mithu and Inga, and I, of course, have been giving my two bits. Uh, and, uh, you know, the time has finally come when JJ and the two models are going to reveal the final outfits chosen. Trust me, they're going to be looking like showstoppers. But that's coming up in just a moment. So don't go away. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching the Brand Equity Diwali special with me, Sonali Krishna, and it's called the CEO Makeover. So, you've seen JJ critique both Inga and Mithu, and it's time for the final reveal. But just before that, JJ, I want you to first talk about uh, Mithu's outfit that you've chosen and describe the cut, the texture, and you know, essentially tell me why you think it's the winner. Well, uh, the primary reason, and though it may sound that I'm playing safe, but black is totally a man's favorite color. And most men who would want to spend most of their lives in wearing black. So that, that definitely is a motivation force for me to think a little logically. Also, I want him to wear it more. So if I went for any of the others, oh, okay. I'd see him probably on a Diwali. Right looking fantastic right. and then I'll probably see him again maybe uh, you know months down the line wearing it again sure. but something like the other thing is a very versatile color a versatile silhouette right you can actually spruce it up each time with a different pocket square it can look totally different now let's come to Inga and uh, tell me which one you think is the best of the lot and why You know, she's a lovely girl. She's because, tall, yeah. so both work in her favor. Uh, she's also not Indian. Yeah. So whatever I put on her seems to get this exotic twist. Absolutely. Which is very interesting. Although I would have liked to give her a sari, right. I didn't feel she was entirely comfortable in it. True. And that's something that I would not want to do because if you have a person who's not really accustomed to a sari but trying to wear one, and that also on a day like Diwali, you want to be comfortable with you're doing things and you know, generally dancing and having fun and everything. So the outfit I think she should wear is now a beautiful cross-pollination of sorts mm. between a typical Indian silhouette but cut in a very modern way. Yeah. And the colour works beautifully on her. The colours of the embroidery blend in beautifully with the colour of her hair. So the overall impact is definitely a little more dramatic 
and it's something that he was visibly looking content for. Absolutely. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and see the final reveal. I hope you guys are going to be absolutely stunned. Wow, are you getting married again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we are. But actually, this is their moment. It is. need to really say anything. I think all set now. Maybe you're going to get a lot of offers now. No. You have to walk the ramp and that's the end of your uh, you know, professional life. <laughs> if that happens, of course, you'll credit brand equity with it. That's right. That's <laughs> it. And JJ too. <laughs> of course, undoubtedly JJ. Uh, no, thank you for being such absolutely wonderful muses. Happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. On that note, JJ, I'd really like to take the opportunity and thank you from ET Now and Brand Equity for taking time out and you know allowing us to put out this lovely Diwali special. Well, thank you for giving me an opportunity and such a perfect couple <laughs> to sort of put together. So I, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mithu and Inga. You guys truly look so gorgeous. The best looking couple in India Inc. All the very best to you for AirAsia's launch in Jan. I truly hope it is a runaway success. And uh, wishing both of you a very happy Diwali. Thank you so much. Happy Diwali to you as well. Happy it's Dipavali. been a truly a pleasure. So. With that, folks, we're completely out of time. We hope you enjoyed watching the show as much as we enjoyed working through it. To take the time and drop us a line at brandequity at etnow.tv or alternatively, log on to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash brandequity to tell us what you thought of our Diwali special. Wishing all of you a very happy Dipavali and a prosperous new year from me, Sonali Krishna and the entire team at Brand Equity.